I want to invite County Executive of Martin Luther King County, Mr. Dow Constantine. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> Always like to make sure I got that Martin Luther King part in there as well. Yeah, Don't just call it King County. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Good? Yeah, thanks. Have a seat. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you coming over. Um, you know, not everybody, one of the things that people have looked one of the areas people have looked to in recent years for leadership in healthcare has been in the employer space. And some employers have tried to do some things like Boeing and, and have had mixed success. King County as an employer has had some meaningful success. Tell, me, tell us about that first. Yeah, about a decade ago, we launched into a, an effort with our employees. We're the 13th largest employer in the state of Washington and it's almost an entirely unionized workforce. And uh, we gained the trust of our employees to the point where we were able to talk with them about uh, changing our approach. And instead of having an ongoing battle over who was going to get stuck with the uh, expensive tab for the health care, we were going to partner to figure out how we could drive down the cost of health care while improving employee health. And uh, so, of course, we uh, launched, a, w with the cooperation of our employees, a a wellness-based system, but we also redesigned with them uh, the health plan that we had with the HMO, which at the time was Group Health. And uh, a whole lot of people started to migrate to that plan. And what that did was provide them with excellent care, including a real emphasis on prevention, at a much lower cost to them and to uh, the public. Uh, we went from uh, about 20, 1% of our employees being on a value-based plan uh, eight years ago to 37% today. Uh, and we just added a new value-based plan, uh, an accountable health network. And our plan is, our goal is to double the number of employees who are uh, insured through those uh, value-based plans within the next few years. That is really driving savings that we can then put into doing things like improving other employee benefits, delivering more services, and so forth. And the really interesting thing is that even with an aging workforce, we had dramatic improvements in health outcomes for yeah. our employees. Uh, smoking cessation, weight loss, diabetes management, and uh, other really basic uh, improvements that we're able to make. You know, it's, uh, it's one thing you know, you know this, like in Washington State, we sort of are a, um, a walk the walk, don't talk the talk kind of mm -hmm. you know, place. We don't toot our own horn that mm -hmm. much, really. Um, and yet, with this employer hat on, I think that you were named, uh, uh, Governing Magazine had named you their top public official of the year. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact phraseology there. And I know Harvard had given uh, King County a, a one of its national and most prestigious awards for the success that you've had. Yeah, that was the Innovations in American Government Award, and, and that was specifically for this program, which saved over $50 million in the first five years. So from a leadership perspective, how do you, I mean, it takes vision, it takes all those right. things, but how do you build a culture yeah. to, to do this? Uh, I mean, well, internally, it's just a stepwise process. It really involves bringing our employees to the table and having them understand that we're sincere, we're not trying to snooker them, we're trying to figure out how to partner to get better outcomes for everyone, the, the workforce and the community. Uh, but telling the story, I mean, you're right, it's very difficult. And, and, and in local government in particular, we spend so much time just playing the hand we've been dealt by the federal and state government, trying to take these rusty, imperfect tools and make something out of them. Yeah. And that's, that's true in healthcare, just as it's true in uh, high capacity transit, for example. One of the things that we have been able to do is to use the Affordable Care Act and its implementation locally to really begin to change the story of health in our community. Uh, we uh, created a network of community-based organizations focusing on communities where people have been left behind historically, finding trusted leaders in those communities, and got people signed up in droves and really uh, dramatically reduced the uninsured rate in our county. We have two and a quarter million people. We now have about 150,000 uninsured. Uh, the biggest single chunk of those being uh, folks who are undocumented and are not eligible for a lot of the federal benefits. And 
we are now able to look and say, what can we do as a local government to show a way forward to at least um, universal quality affordable care? Is there, can we use these tools we have to get there? What other tools do we need the state or federal government to give us? And you know, obviously that then uh, requires us to ask, is there something more ambitious that we can aim for? Yeah. Uh, could we aim for uh, a system in which every person has uh, not just care, including publicly provided care, but uh, full insurance? Do you have a uh, uh, candidate yet in the Democratic nomination for president? Uh, I don't. Uh, I am, uh, like most Democrats, most interested in who is most able to win. Yeah. And out of the candidates I've seen on the stage right now, I would take any of them over the President of the United States. I think um, some observers would say that the primary process is going to create a uh, Democratic nominee uh, you know, who's better prepared to take on uh, the incumbent. Uh, that sort of steel sharpens steel, and you certainly had a, a, a primary in your race for executive that was um, animated, enthusiastic. There was a lot of activity around that race. Uh, I know you're not running for governor, but should Governor Inslee have a primary to, to sharpen steel? Well, now, is, is an affirmative answer to that going to help me with our legislative agenda next year? That's the question. That's a great question. Yeah, uh, the know. legislators in the audience can tell yeah. me the answer to that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that Governor Inslee's done a great job of articulating the values of the Democratic Party and bringing the climate issue in particular to the national stage. I thought it was tragic and ironic that CNN had their climate forum after he dropped out of the race and everybody else who was kind of uh, uh, tagging along on the message got to talk about it. Um, I do think that um, the Democratic primary for president is going to uh, create a better general election candidate. Uh, there's really no uh, uh, question that Donald Trump is going to come out with guns blazing and yeah. is going to take the low road. So the notion that your candidate would be too damaged by going through a bruising primary is less valid now than ever. Yeah. So I had I thought I heard you say that you were not planning on running for re-election in 2021. Do you have any plans for 2021? Are you thinking about running for re-election? Yes, or? I am thinking about running for re-election yeah. in 2021. We have a lot of good work to do, including on health care yeah. and, and, this, and this transformation uh, with behavioral health. Yeah. And I'm excited about the work we're doing in King County on that, as I am on environment, transportation, and equity, and social justice. Yeah. And uh, my plan is to make a decision within the next little while to let people know mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, we do not know uh, ultimately what will happen with uh, the governorship uh, over time, uh, but I assume that uh, the, the best work to be done is at the head of a county government of two and a quarter million people. We have the resources, the supportive constituency, and uh, to steal a line from the President of the United States, the best people yeah. uh, to help us create change. That's right. I hadn't thought about the logistics of running for a King County Executive for another term in 2021 mm -hmm. if a Democrat wins the White House and if Governor Inslee is appointed to a cabinet position, mm -hmm. then there would, of course, be a 2021, likely a 2021 uh, mm -hmm. election. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you a little bit about what you think as a county leader about the integration work happening at the yeah. state across the state. Um, general thoughts or any thoughts you'd like to share, recognizing that staff has been more deeply engaged in this uh, appropriately. Uh, but what are your thoughts you'd like to share on that? Well, you know, the behavioral health integration, we've been really heavily involved in. King County is still at the table. And uh, much to the chagrin of some, but uh, we feel it's the right thing to do. And, and uh, I know that the legislature, the state's uh, intent in this is really to make sure that we're treating to, to serving the whole person. And I take that to mean as well the whole community. And, and so in King County, we're really focused on making sure that we're reaching those who historically have been left behind. And that when we think about the whole person and the whole community, we're thinking not just about physical and behavioral health, but we're thinking about the other things that people need in order to be able to live a, a, a stable, secure, healthy life, like, like housing and a job where they can support themselves. These resources are available in our county. We have mm -hmm. a robust economy, and the big challenge for leaders, in particular me, is figuring out how we can connect people who maybe for generations have been left out 
to the economic story that's evolving right now in yeah. Central Puget Sound. So on this, again, last question, because uh, I always think it's interesting to hear the advice people would give. We have so little peer mentorship mm -hmm. at a senior level in politics or healthcare. What counsel would you give folks in terms of trying to bring ideas forward maybe uh, to county leaders or to state leaders, current, future, maybe thinking ahead about the next waiver, which yeah. is a little bit far field, not too far field, but a little bit. Um, you know, what advice would you give to this crowd? Well, first of all, our door's always open. Uh, my staff zealously guards my schedule, but uh, our door is always open. And we want to be an agent for innovation. So when people have an idea about how things could be done better, I want to hear about it. Uh, when we are in a position to be able to test out, and, I, and we talked about some ideas earlier offline, uh, when we're in a position to be able to test out an idea, be the laboratory for it, uh, we're enthusiastic to do that. Part of our personality as a government is to be that, that testing ground, that, that proving ground for yeah. new ideas. And they can take root statewide and nationally. And uh, it, that, is, that is something that we, we want to welcome. Yeah. King County Executive Dow Constantine, thank you very much, sir, for coming Thanks. over. Thanks. Let's Thanks, give him a round of applause. Thank you. So Appreciate it. Yeah.